Hello, my friends. As promised, I told you that when I was, I was going to be painting my new Gilio. So everything has arrived today. I'm really excited. I'm going to open this up for you guys and show you what came in the package. Over here is my hair dryer to help speed up. Um, it almost fell off when I touched it to help speed up uh, drying. And here's my Gilio. So I'm going to get rid of the stuff inside my Gilio, put it away, and then I'm going to open this up and I will be right back to get started. All right, guys, I am back. So everything, here's everything that came in the kit from Angelus. This is the Professional Leather Prepare and Deglazer. I purchased the Matte Acrylic Finisher. I purchased three colors, English Tan, Avocado, and uh, Red for another project that I have in mind for something completely unrelated. This is the brushes which are very nice. They have a variety of different brushes. Um, easy cleaner, which would be to, to use, you can let, use this on leather, buck, rubber, linen, Gore-Tex, nylon, satin, canvas, plastic, and vinyl. So it's basically just a cleaner to help take care of your product. And then I'll also send you this nice little shoe brush. So I do have actually a pair of shoes that I will be using um, the red paint for later on. So, um, like I said before, I have uh, my blow dryer here to sort of help dry and then I have uh, these little cotton wipes here that I'm going to use to prepare and deglaze and I am just going to get started. Let me make sure real quick that everything's good up here. Okay, so <clears throat> today has been a crappy day for me so far. Do you want to know why? Well, I took my son to do his driver's test today, and while we were at the um, driver's place, like where he's getting his test and oh wow, that's kind of interesting how this is actually pulling off some of the um, color. Mm. It's, I don't know if you can see that, it's actually like becoming slightly orangish. But that's okay, because you know, I'm about to cover it. Um, and this is taking off the factory finish and taking off a little bit of the green but that's okay so anyway we were at the uh, driver's place for my son to take his driver's test and um because it's such a long way away from our house I really didn't have any plans to go anywhere else or do anything else while we were doing this so my daughters and I just stayed there um we sat in the car for a little bit but it was so beautiful that we actually decided to go outside um, next to the driver's training center and um, I decided to let my girls run around and play a little bit and apparently while I was allowing my girls to run around and play and I wasn't paying attention to my car a woman who I saw come into the uh, driver's training center a woman de she backed into my car and um, she uh, apparently did not have her license and uh, her daughter was with her and so they thought it would be a good idea to switch places and then drive off so I was involved in a hit and run today um, she pretty much totaled the front end of our car and then she drove away and then when um, I went inside and reported it to the people and called the police they had her come back to inspect and see if it was in fact her car that had made the damage and um she lied straight to me lied to the other people the people that run the studio the driver's training center and she also lied to the officer and um yeah so apparently they're gonna go hunt this woman down and she has about three different charges that she will be be being brought up on so while i'm not happy that they're going to and she was I say she was an older woman, but I don't want you to get the impression that she was like an old, sweet, gray-haired, 70-year-old woman. No, actually, she was a very cantankerous, um, just a peach of a woman who, as soon as she came back, um, adamantly declared to me and anyone else that listened to her that she did not hit my car. Um, yeah. Well, it turns out she did, uh, they actually caught it on camera, she did hit my car, and um, when they stopped 
because they stopped after they hit my car and got out of their car to look at the damage. At that point, she actually changed uh, seats with her daughter, and her daughter drove off. So, yeah. So as you can see, I am doing a very light layer here. And when doing leather projects, you're supposed to go with the grain. And um, I'm really not sure where the grain is here. Um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit difficult to figure that out. So I'm just trying to do a nice light coat, being careful not to get any paint on the hardware. However, if you do get paint on the hardware, it's very simple to clean off. It's um, just some rubbing alcohol on a cotton wipe like this or, or whatnot. So I'm doing this on a surface with paper. Uh, many of you have seen this backdrop before and you know that this is actually on top of my desk, but it's just paper. So I'm not worried about if it gets messy. I would just take it off and replace it with a new paper. No worries. And I'm not using gloves because honestly, I ain't got time for that. I just, I like to live on the wild side. I like to live on the edge. So for years and years and years, I have highly, highly, highly coveted a, um, a gold uh, Giulio Campania. But buying new from Julio was just not in my price range. Um, and also, it, you know, it seems like when they were, when they come back in stock, I just don't have the extra money to do so. So on the Giulio Marketplace, I saw a very lovely woman who was selling a beautiful medium Campania and it was in my price range. And so I thought, you know what? This is, this is a great idea. Um, and at that point when I purchased it, I thought, you know, I've done enough craft projects in my time where I can probably use leather paint to paint it the color that I want. So that's what I decided to do. Um, and it's so funny because three days after I purchased this planner, which it actually is, is a beautiful, um, three days after I purchased this planner, like two women popped up and they were selling their gold um, Campanias. However, they were not in my price range. Anyway, it's not a big deal. So a lot of people are probably going to be like freaking out. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe you are painting a Giulio Campania. Well, this will probably, most likely, be the only Giulio Campania I ever own. And I use my planners as a wallet. I carry them with me daily. I have my planners out when I'm at home. So I utilize my planners. They're not just an accessory for me. These are, you know, part of my everyday life. Um, so I want it to be a planner that I love. Just like I love my Filofax. However, my Filofax's rings are just not big enough for me at this point. Now at some point in time, it may... So there's like some bits here that are like, you can still see like the grain in the leather, like the green. So I'm just sort of kind of doing a little bit of that to get in there. So it may come a point in time in the future where I don't mind the um, uh, the smaller rings. Maybe at some point I will need smaller rings. So I will still have my Filofax for that. I'm not getting rid of my Filofax at all. But I also want this planner, being that it is a huge investment for me, I want it to be a planner that I love. And um, so I am DIYing it. I'm going to, and I haven't decided quite yet if I'm going to paint the inside or not. That's actually why I got this avocado, because I was worried that this bright green would actually just be way too bright for me. But I actually think I like it. I like it for the inside, but I really do want, I really wanted the outside to be brown. And so I looked over a lot of the colors on the Angelus website and I decided to, can you see everything? I just want to make sure, real quick. Okay, I'll put it there, sorry about that. But I looked over a lot of colors on the Angelus website and I ordered directly from the website. And at the end of the day, I decided that I really liked English tan. Now it is probably looking a bit dark here, um, but once, I believe once it dries a bit, it won't be as dark looking, it'll sort of, lighten a bit 
And even if it doesn't, though, that's still going to be fine with me. I really, I really like brown. It's one of my favorite colors. And green is actually one of my favorite colors as well. But I just wasn't feeling this. I like it for the inside, but, I, you know, I just, I really like my brown planners. So now I'm just sort of going to go back. Before I get underneath the strap and the strap, I'm just going to kind of go back and and sort of try to help to break up the brush strokes where I stopped stroking and like there may be bits of paint that are thicker than in other areas so I'm going to do that for a minute and then I'll go ahead and I'll paint the strap and underneath the strap so I want to make sure that I do really well over the spine here and there's another spot where you can see the green poking through um, I want to make sure I paint really well over the spine. I'm going to do probably three different coats. But this planner is going to see a lot of use and a lot of wear. Um, and I want to make sure it holds up. And of course, it's not going to be a problem to touch up paint now and again. But Gilios are, you know, you can use Gilios for like 10 to 15 years. And um, that's fantastic. So I want to make sure I have this. I want to make sure it's something that I love, that I'm going to want to use for 10 to 15 years. So, just sort of coming in on the ends where the, the thread is. And, you know, if I wanted to. Sorry about that. My husband needed my presence. He's on the phone talking to the insurance company about the accident. So... I'm going to just continue a little bit, come over here. Now, this looks really thick, um, but I'm going to spread it out. But mainly, I just want, with this first coat, I want to make sure that there's as little work for me to do as possible on the next coats. So if there are little areas that you can still see the green, then, um, like, especially here on the bottom like on the edges I just want to make sure I go over those really well and if I need to touch them up you know I don't mind doing that so let me make sure you can see I don't want to put my hand over okay I'm gonna pull this just over a bit so now I am going to try to be really super cool and use my left hand so you guys can see oh I just went in really far into the paint okay so I'm just going underneath I'm getting this bit of leather here and trying not to get any paint on the pen loop. I still haven't decided if I'm going to paint the inside. Now I will paint, whether I paint the inside or not, I will paint the, um, the small overhang of leather on the inside. And I will use obviously a very small brush which, with which to do that. So I'm just sort of getting in here, trying to spread the paint as far as possible while not having too much, like over too much paint. I don't want like splotches anywhere. Even though I don't plan to ever sell this, I still want to be able to look at my planner and say, hey, I did a good job. Eh, getting my hands dirty. Other people are like, you have to wear gloves. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't need gloves. Okay, so here I'm getting a little bit on the snap, but that's okay. I will show you at the very end how easy that is to just gently remove. And now I'm going to move on to painting the top side of this. Now this, uh, the strap, um, let me see, make sure you can see. The strap is actually pretty pebbly. Um, there are a lot of people who are, love their Gilios and they love for the whole planner to be pebbly. And that's something cool too, when you order your Gilio, you can, uh, you can request one that's like super pebbly or one that has a more, I think they call this like veiny texture, like a, a smoother vein, veiny texture. 
So, but that's one of the things I love about Julio is that they're just, everyone is different. You won't ever find two Julios, even if they're the same color, the same type of Julio, but you'll never, ever, ever find two Julios that are exactly the same. I feel like they're all custom works of art. And I, I do feel bad about painting this Julio, but at the same time, and I know that I is, you know, basically the value. From the moment I touched this thing with my paintbrush, the value dropped exponentially. However, like I said, I don't have any plans to sell this. It was a huge investment for me, and um, I just want to enjoy it. I want to use it. I want to paint it a color that I'm going to love and um, go on to use it for a very long time, for many, many years. Okay, so I think this is good for a first coat. Yeah, for a first coat, I think that's pretty good. I'm try just trying to get any of the spots that are, have a little bit more paint in them so I can just sort of even it out. I don't want any, you know, having like, I don't want any like uh, goops and gobs anywhere. So I am going to now put my paintbrush down and um, I will wash it before I do the second coat, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my paintbrush down and I'm going to uh, stop recording and I'm going to take a few minutes to sit here and blow this with my blow dryer. And we will see if it is uh, dry enough to where I can go ahead and do a second coat. So I shall be back momentarily. All right, so I am back. Um, basically, I just hit it with the blow dryer for about 10, 15 minutes. And now I'm going to put on a second coat. I'm going to use this little thingy right here to get into that. Just a little bit. Oh, I got some on my finger. So I washed my brush and I am now applying coat number two. Now it's also important to remember when you do this that you never want to have so much paint there, like you can see on the edge here where you sort of lose sight of some of the, some of the, um, the sewing lines. Well, that looks horrible and I don't want that to be my final product. So once I am finished painting this one, this side, I will go over this with my little cloth or my little thing here and I will remove some of that excess paint. And so I already have a first coat on the opposite side of the thing, so I'm not actually going to put another coat on that side. I'm going to wait to see how everything else dries. I'm going to wait until I'm completely done with this side. Oh, I just pulled up some of that paint. I'm going to wait until I'm completely done with this side, and then um, when I flip it over to do the... the um, the uh, overhang of leather on the other side, then I will take care of the other side of this popper. So again, just going over in a relatively light coat. Well, I guess maybe I messed up that by rubbing too hard on it. That's okay. I'm sure over time of me pulling on the popper and closing it and opening it, some of that will wear off a little bit too. But I'm hoping that you won't completely be able to see the green, you know. A little bit of wear over time is nice. I think it adds character to your planner, you know, to your purse, whatever the leather product you are working on may be. And I really liked this color, English Tan. Um, it just really made me think of like horses and saddles and it's just really pretty. I feel kind of bad. My husband's down there on the phone with all the insurance people and 
but you know, that's his forte. That's like, he, I don't like to talk to people unless I'm talking on YouTube. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's down there taking care of business and I'm up here painting a planner, you know, just painting a planner. And then as we were on the way home, we were driving back here to Fort Polk where I live and um, we came in the back entrance to the base and there was a man driving on the other side of the road. It's a, it's a two lane uh, highway, I guess. So there's one lane that's going one way and then there's the other lane right next to you that's going the opposite direction. So uh, a truck was coming toward me and then all of a sudden it's tire popped and he swerved into my lane. And so of course my kids are like, oh my gosh. But um, thankfully I was able to, and he was pretty close to me, but thankfully by the grace of God, I was able to have quick enough reaction time that I sort of swerved out of his way. And then he of course ended up pulling over. And um, but yeah, I'm just like, wow, today is just a day. Maybe we should just get off the road. So, but we arrived safely at home and I hope that man was able to replace his tire um, yeah so I do believe I am done with coat number two and now I'm going to let this coat dry and every time I touch this on that part right there I end up taking the paint off and showing more of that uh, green darn it all right, I'm done touching it now. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna hit it with the uh, blow dryer again. And um, let me see if I can maybe use this to just gently make that a little bit better. Yeah, just very gently. So when I go back over this with the blow dryer, I will make sure I hit this area up really good. Okay, so I have just finished uh, blow drying this for about 15 minutes while well, my husband came up here and talked to me and um, now I'm going to proceed with putting on the third coat. Uh, this time I'm going to take a little bit more care over here and I'm going to start to sort of gently, gently, gently paint the edges here. But I actually, after I'm done with this third coat, I am going to try to paint some of these edges and yeah. And then I'm going to let this sit overnight and then tomorrow I will flip it over and do the inside part of it. So... Sorry if you hear any background noise. My um my poor baby, my oldest child, my boy, who is about to leave to join the Air Force. Uh the reason why we were at the driving center, he actually failed his driver's test today. Um for failing to yield to a stop sign. So yeah. Daddy's not happy about that because this is actually his second time failing. So neither daddy or I am paying for his next test. So the boy just got grounded from his phone and from all video games, and he's actually gonna have to come up with uh, stuff of his own, and he's gonna have to sell it to pay for his next driver's test because we're not paying for it. So, oh, if you hear any background noise, there's no yelling or anything, but, you know, that's going on right now. It's just life, you know. I actually was the one who paid for my son to take his second driver's test today. Um, my husband, I mean, we paid $400 for him to take the driver's course. And, um, yeah, so that's a huge amount of money there. And, uh... So, failing the driver's test once, okay. 
right, I'll pay for you to take the second one because daddy wasn't going to pay. I mean, and I don't blame him. $400 is a lot of money. So I paid for him to take the second one and come to find out he failed again. So now he's going to have to pay for it. And such is life. When you are trying to raise, you know, a boy who is uh, becoming a man. Oh no, I got a little bit of this acrylic paint on the um, pen loop. That's okay, I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. What am I going to do about it tomorrow? No big deal. I don't mind painting the pen loop either. Oh, that'd be kind of pretty. So I'm just sort of trying to go in on the edges here. Just to make my job a little bit easier for tomorrow. Sorry, this is a really bad way to kind of sort of bend. So, sorry if I'm blocking your view. I'm just getting a little bit more here in these cracks. And now on to this side. Over here at the bottom, looks like it could use a bit more. Right over here too. This is actually turning out pretty nice. I am really glad I decided to do this. Just these little spots right there. And um, if I need to give these a second coat tomorrow, I don't mind doing that too. And I am going to be putting on the uh, finisher after all is said and done. And I ordered the, um, the matte finisher. And the matte still has a little bit of shine to it, but it's not like a, like a high gloss sheen. Okay, so I'm going to put this um, small brush away. Actually, let me just go ahead and get underneath here. Yeah, I guess I'm going to be painting the pen loop tomorrow. <laughs> That's okay, though. Sorry you can't see this part. I'm just trying to get in here and uh, do the coat underneath here and make sure that I've got, you know, as much of it covered as possible. But I can paint the underside of this again tomorrow because I will have the planner flipped to the other side. Okay. Oh, darn it. Why did I just do that? So, our, whoops. All right. I'm going to take this out now and continue on with the large brush. And this time I'm going to do a very thin, even thinner than my last thin coats. I'm going to do a very thin coat, hopefully. And, um, yeah, move on from there. So this has been laying flat the whole time, and I want to make sure that I'm not going to be, you know, getting any issues with the leather when I open and close my planner. So right now, I'm going to just try and close it a little bit and then get in here on the spine. Since I hadn't quite gotten the, um bits of the spine after you know it moves so that was a little bit much there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread that paint out as much as I can Ooh. so I have found that if I push really hard with the paintbrush I actually end up bringing up a little bit of those coats of paint and that's probably because I've only been drying it for like a little bit of time um, and you know, hitting it with the blow dryer. It hasn't had a chance to like fully dry between coats. And ordinarily you would want to do that. You would 
uh, want to completely let it dry like for hours, at least an hour um, in between coats, but I'm incredibly impatient, incredibly impatient. And um, yeah, waiting is just not my style. So, and at the end of the day, I love this planner, but it is just a planner. And no matter how this planner turns out, I'm still going to use it because I personalized it and I made it mine. So I'm just spreading out the last bit of this paint here with the brush, trying to make sure I don't have any, uh, noticeable ending bits of brush stroke do over here on this side oh no okay that's fine make sure you can still see okay so now i'm just going to do over here with this one little bit of paint i'm just going to try and uh, spread that out as far as i can I'm gonna go underneath here again with this larger brush too. So I guess the key, if you're not going to really and truly let the paint set, you know, for the recommended time or like hours in between coats, when you use your paintbrush on the second and third coats, you should probably be very soft with it. Like don't push down super hard because um, being that the top part of it, you know, the top coat, not top coat, but like, like when you paint your nails, you know, you can touch your nails after they've dried a little bit, but um, if anything big happens to them or if there's any kind of like real pressure, uh, you know that your nails will end up getting messed up because the coats underneath or the nail polish underneath that has not had enough time to dry properly. So that's sort of like what's happening here. So I'm just going to hit this area again, very gently. And if I make it so that, it, you know, you act like if I'm too hard, I've got too much paint on here and you can't see some of the, um, the stitches, um, I'll be okay. Cause like I said, this is for me and um, I don't need to have perfection. I just need to enjoy what I have and painting it this color and uh, personalizing this and making it mine is exactly what I like to do. So, here we go. This is the end of coat number three. And I'm going to let this dry overnight now. And I will see you guys bright and early probably tomorrow morning. And uh, show you the inside. And show you how it looks, you know, after three coats. And um, we'll get started on the inside. And uh, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this process so far. Please don't scream at me for painting on a Jillio. Um, <laughs> um, and I hope this is helpful to maybe one person, maybe someone. So yeah, thank you so much for watching.